Hello, and thank you for coming to the Gate Church of the High Desert. Please be seated at this time. Service is about to start. start, start. Last week, we celebrated the resurrection of our Savior. We stood in awe of a Redeemer who has defeated sin, conquered death, and changed our eternity. Now, the work of the church begins. It's our time to go and tell the world about Jesus, to let them know they are loved, to show them they are cared for, to be the light of Christ to those around us. The story of Easter is not meant to be kept quiet. The gift is not meant to be kept secret. The love of Jesus, His grace and mercy, the power of His resurrection are meant to be shared with our friends, our families, our communities, our nation, and our world. Today there is light overcoming darkness, hope destroying hopelessness, victory rising out of defeat, and life rising from the ashes of death. It's time to climb the mountaintops and proclaim in one loud voice, He is risen. He is risen indeed.
is for freedom. mercy that we have been rescued, delivered from sin and darkness. We praise you, O oh God.
my soul Then sings my soul My Savior God to Thee How great Thou art How great Thou art Then sings my shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then I shall bow in humble adoration and then proclaim my God how great thou art then sings my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. With all your heart, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my What a joy it is to praise you this morning, oh God. We know that your people seek after your glory. We desire your presence in our lives, in our homes. Let your glory fall, oh God. Let your spirit fall, oh God. worship you. My life is yours. My hope is in you only. My heart you hold. Cause you made this sinner Your glory is so beautiful. I fall onto my knees in awe. In the heartbeat of my life, the 
is to worship in your life. Cause your glory is so beautiful. Cause your glory is so beautiful.
Father, we declare that you are good. We declare that you are gracious and kind. And we are so grateful for that. And today we are gathered around our TVs and around our computers and maybe even iPhones. But we are one in harmony. We are one in unison to declare that you are good and you are gracious and you are God. And we worship you, Lord. We worship you. And we love you. And we pray today that those who are listening, those who are involved in this service, that their hearts will be touched, their minds will be transformed, and that you, Lord, will have your way in each and every life. Come, Holy Spirit right now and fall on every family. Come and overwhelm every person under the sound of my voice. And today, break hearts, change lives, restore families, deliver, set free, and save souls. This is our prayer. And we know, Lord, this is your will. For we thank you and we praise you and we give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. This past week, we started doing a bulk text message, and that is to all the members of the Gates Church of the High Desert. If you did not receive a bulk text message, then please um, give us your correct phone number. That means we do not have your correct phone number in our system. So email info at thegatehd.com and we'll be able to add you so that you guys can get all of our text messages. We're not going to overwhelm you with them, but just so you are up to date on what's going on here at the gate. We just want to invite all gate families with children to stay tuned for after the service today. There's going to be a special presentation for the children. This is a children's program that's put on by Pastor Perry. And so as soon as the sermon's over with Pastor Randy, um, stay on and join us as Pastor Perry gives a great presentation to the children. Just want to remind all of our GATE members that um, we want to encourage you guys to keep on tithing and giving to Faith Promise for our missions. There are now three ways to give. You can either mail in your check. Um, people usually call that snail mail. But go ahead and mail it in. Um, put a stamp on it. Or you can go online and um, go to thegatehd.com and you can give online. There is now, now a new way where you can text to give. So at the bottom of the screen is the number that you can text and it will have you set up your account, get from your bank account, and it's all from your phone. So just remind you guys that we want you to be giving and tithing and um, just give into the Lord and for what He all deserves. So thank you so much. If you are a senior and you need help getting groceries or supplies, we want to ask you just to let us know. We have many volunteers who are willing to go grocery shopping and, and help those at our church. And so if you can just let us know, you can send us an email at info at thegatehd.com. Or you can also just contact Miss Tammy. Her number's at the bottom. And so if you need anything, please don't hesitate to, to let us know. We want to be able to serve you and others in this beautiful congregation want to serve as well. Well, good morning to all of you who have joined us here on Facebook Live. Uh, welcome to the Gate Church of the High Desert. We're so glad that you're here, and we are praying for your safety. We're praying for your health. And most of all, we hope that you are enjoying the presence of God in your life during this quarantine season. Today is one week after Easter, and I want to speak to you this morning on what happened after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead and I also want to address what happens in our own lives after our resurrection from the dead. The Bible says in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, for it is I who no longer live, but Christ who lives in me. 
And the life which I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. And then Colossians 3, verse 1 through 4 says, If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. It is clear from the Scriptures, and these Scriptures in particular, that not only has Christ been resurrected from the dead, but all who have placed their faith and trust in response to His amazing grace have also been raised or resurrected from the dead. Yet too many who claim life in Christ live as if they were spiritually dead, still in their trespasses and sins. This is one of the great tragedies in our world today, and especially in the church. People who claim to be Christian don't seem to understand what resurrection life is all about. Therefore, today I want to speak to you on the topic of beyond the resurrection. I want us to look at the life of Christ post-resurrection and learn from Him what our lives should be about after we are born again, beyond our own resurrection from the dead. So I hope today that you'll listen intently, you'll pay close attention, and God will speak to you and change your life. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to dive into your word, and I pray that you'll remove all obstacles and hindrances from our lives and that we will hear your voice in your word. Change our minds, change our hearts, transform our lives for your honor and for your glory. For this we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Now that the season of Lent is over, what now? Easter Sunday has passed and all of the celebrations around it are coming to an end. Our focus on the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ has been as strong as it usually is this time of year, even though we had to celebrate it much differently than we've ever celebrated it before. But what now? Do we return to our regular routines? Do we return to our regular lifestyles? Of course, if we look around at the circumstances that we're in today, and we look in the natural, we see that this pandemic has disrupted life as we knew it, and all of our natural routines are being altered by the situation. But what about our spiritual lives? That's where we need to to pay attention. What about our spiritual lives? What about the resurrection season? You see, This disease, this virus that is spread throughout this world has impacted us and weighed heavy on our minds, and it is effectively changing things for everyone. But how does the resurrection of Christ impact your life? How much time have you spent dwelling upon it? How much time have you spent looking into the resurrection and what it does to impact us? Not just once a year, but all the time. How has your lifestyle, your patterns of living, your routine, how has it really been affected by the gospel story? You see, when this virus comes to an end, there will be a new normal. But I think we need to see the resurrection of Christ and its power in our lives to be more serious than anything else in history, certainly more serious than this virus. We should allow the resurrection to impact us more than any other power or threat ever could. And in thinking about the resurrection of Christ, it's necessary that we search our hearts and determine that by His power there will be lasting changes to the way we live. It is about what our lives look like beyond the resurrection. So I want us to search the Scriptures this morning and see Christ beyond the resurrection and pay close attention to what lessons we can take from Him about our own lives. So I want you to take your Bibles this morning and let us look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'm going to give you just a moment to turn there. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 
And we're going to be reading and looking at verses 3 through 8. Because in this passage of Scripture, it tells us what I want you to mark down as our first point today. And that is that Christ, after his resurrection, appeared. Christ, after his resurrection, appeared. Now, the Apostle Paul recites here in this passage what seems to be a formula or creedal statement about the resurrection of Christ. Now, I hope you're there by now in 1 Corinthians 15. And here's what it says beginning in verse 3. For I have delivered to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, and that, here it is, he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. Now, the Apostle Paul is telling us that after the resurrection of Christ, the first thing that Jesus did is he appeared. He appeared. And he first appeared to his disciples. He shows up as resurrection life. He shows up with resurrection life. And this is very important for us to note. And it shows us that he was willing to reveal life and give life to those that were closest to him, those who had walked with him while he was with them prior to his death. And it seems to me that Christ wanted to show them what life beyond the grave looked like. That's what salvation is always. It is to show people what life beyond the grave really should look like. That's the purpose of the Christian life. It is important for us, each and every one of us, to live our lives in such a way that we're showing people what true life is all about. It's, an, it's very important to understand this. I remember when I died to my sin and rebellion against God, and He resurrected me in newness of life. I, I'll never forget it. I was, had gone through years of rebellion against God during my teen years, and I got into my early 20s. But God reached down and grabbed a hold of my heart, and He rescued me out of darkness. He rescued me out of sinfulness, sinful lifestyles, sinful routines, sinful patterns. And when He rescued me, He gave me newness of life. And I immediately went to those who were closest to me to share what new life looks like. Now, it took some time for them to be convinced of this change that had occurred in my life, but that was the first passion of my heart, was to go now and show people what things looked like in my life that were different than the way they once looked. It was my passion to show the living Christ, to appear before others. I not only wanted to reveal life, but I wanted to give life. The question for us today is, how do you share the life of Christ with those you have had or still have influence with? You see, we have the greatest power of all power living within us by the Spirit of the living God. We've not only been resurrected to new life, we have resurrection power to release to the lost and to the saved alike. You see, the first thing that Jesus did after the resurrection, beyond the resurrection, is that he appeared, and he appeared to his disciples. But he also appeared to the disheartened. In Luke 24, we read about two disheartened disciples of Jesus who were walking from Jerusalem to Emmaus on that day. It was the very day that Jesus rose from the dead. And as they traveled, a man joined them. And it was the resurrected Jesus, although they did not recognize him or know it was Jesus. And the man asked these two guys in Luke 24, verse 17, he says, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood looking sad. They were disheartened disciples. 
they, their hopes had been crushed because of the death of Jesus. And although they were hearing the rumors of Jesus' resurrection, they were still very discouraged and very disheartened. They, they, however, were surprised that this man had not heard of the recent events that had Jerusalem in turmoil. They proceeded to tell the stranger of Jesus' crucifixion and the reports of his empty tomb. And Jesus responded in verse 25 through 27 of Luke 24. And he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken, was it not necessary that Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and the prophets, he interpreted to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. So as they walked... Jesus taught them what the Old Testament had predicted about himself. And when they arrived in Emmaus that evening, the two disciples stopped to eat, and they asked Jesus to join them, and he did. And the Bible tells us that as he broke bread and blessed the meal, in verse 31 of Luke 24, it says, their eyes were opened, and they recognized him as Jesus. And immediately, Jesus vanished. What was their response to this whole situation? Well, in verse 33 and 34, it says they got up at once and they returned to Jerusalem. And there they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen. This is an exciting time for these two who were so disheartened. But Jesus appeared to them. Jesus came to them and spent time with them because of his great care for them. You see, he gave them a story that strengthened their hearts. And there's no greater message for the disheartened than the story of Christ and his resurrection from the dead. It proves that he is God, and it proves that there is life and hope still to come. So his resurrection provides for our resurrection, and we must, as Jesus did, share the story that strengthens hearts. The story that Jesus shared started with Moses and the prophets, and he brought them current all the way up to their time in explaining and making clear why these things are so. These disheartened disciples reacted to these stories from Scripture that Jesus shared. It brought deep conviction of the truth to their heart that inspired them to say in verse 32 of Luke 24, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked? You see, there's power in the Word of God. There's power in the story. There's power in the gospel. And what Jesus did after his resurrection is he first showed up to his disciples, but he also showed up and appeared to the disheartened, and he began to share the story, and in the story there was the showing of the Savior. You see, while these two on the road to Emmaus were blinded physically, they did not, under, uh, they did not understand who Jesus was, but their eyes of faith were being opened as Jesus shared the Scriptures to them. And Jesus had promised in John 14, 21, that he would show himself to those who love him. And this is exactly what he does on the road to Emmaus. John 14, 21 says, Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. I will manifest myself to him. The Emmaus Road story is important, and it shows us how much Jesus cares for those who are disheartened and discouraged. And Jesus shows us also the way to minister resurrection life. Luke 24 is often seen as a model of the journey that Jesus makes with many of us today. As he opens our eyes, he points us to the Word and reveals himself along life's walk as the resurrected Savior and Lord. And I think we look at what Jesus did after his resurrection, and we must do the same. We must, in our new life, in our resurrected life, in our Christian life, we must appear to those that are closest to us. We must appear to those who are disheartened and disillusioned and discouraged because you are the only Jesus that many people are ever going to see. Jesus appeared to the disciples. He appeared 
to the disheartened. And thirdly, he appeared to the doubting. I want you to turn your Bibles over to John chapter 20, because I want us to take a look at doubting Thomas. Everyone's familiar with doubting Thomas. And in John chapter 20, verse 24 through 31, it tells us the story of how when Jesus appeared and showed up, Thomas was absent. And then a few days later, there was an encounter. So let's begin reading in verse 24 of John chapter 20. It says, Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas this time was with them. And although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. And Thomas answered him and said, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Jesus is appearing to the doubting Thomas is a testimony that Christ cares even for those whose faith is weak. This is an encouragement to all of us who have at times found ourselves weary and weak in our faith. Sometimes we even wonder if God is there. If He is truly alive, especially in the circumstances and situations of life. When God feels absent, it tends to cause us to wonder if He is real or not. No matter who you are or how strong you might be spiritually, some of you may be saying, well, I've never wondered, I've never doubted. All of us have doubted at one time or another in our lives. And these are the kinds of times that we all need to have our faith strengthened. Jesus understands us more than we even know. He shows up for Thomas when he was adamant in his refusal to believe. He showed up on the seashore and revealed himself to Peter, the backslider, and Nathaniel, the skeptic, after they and the disciples decided to return to their old life of fishing. Jesus appeared to his disciples He appeared to the disheartened on the road to Emmaus, and he appears to the doubting Thomas there among the disciples, and so should we. We should appear in resurrection power in the lives of those we have influence with. We should appear in the lives of those who are disheartened and discouraged and whose faith is weak and they are overwhelmed with doubt. You and I as believers are carriers of the hope that people need in this world, especially in the times in which we live. You see, Christ, beyond the resurrection, appeared. He appeared. But not only did He appear after His resurrection, Christ, after His resurrection, affirmed. Affirmed. He affirmed some things that He taught before His very death. For example... He affirmed that He is the resurrection and the life. When Jesus made this statement, He was claiming to be the source of both. He was the source of resurrection and He was the source of life. There is no resurrection apart from Christ. And there is no eternal life apart from Christ. Beyond that, Jesus was also making a statement concerning His divine nature. He does more than give life. The Bible teaches us that He is life, and therefore death has no ultimate power over Him. And because Christ lives in those of us who have faith and we've trusted in Him, death has no power over us. Jesus confers this spiritual life on those who believe in Him so that they share in His triumph over death. That's exciting to me, and I hope it's exciting to you to know that although these mortal bodies will will go into the ground and decay, 
we as faith-filled believers of the Lord Jesus Christ will never die. We have eternal life, and all of that is found in the source of who Jesus Christ really is. 1 John chapter 5, verse 11 and 12 says, And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life, and whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Those who believe in and trust Jesus Christ will experience resurrection because having the life Jesus gives, it is impossible for death to defeat them. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 53 through 57, it says this, and listen carefully because these are powerful words. It says, for this perishable body, body, this perishable body must put on the imperishable, and this mortal body must put on immortality. When the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus resurrected from the dead, and in his resurrection life, he was affirming that he is the resurrection. He was affirming that he is the life, and that he is the source of all those things. But there's a second thing that Jesus affirmed beyond the resurrection. He affirmed that he is the way, the truth, and the life. The night before Jesus would die, he spoke of his departure to his disciples. And as he began to speak about that departure, it caused the disciples to have a number of questions. And so they began to raise those questions to Jesus And in John chapter 13, verse 33, he said, My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you now, where I am going, you cannot come. This prompted Peter to ask where he was going in verse 36 of that same chapter. Peter and the others did not understand that Jesus was speaking of his death, his burial, his resurrection, and even his ascension to heaven. Jesus' response was, where I am going, you cannot follow me now, but you will follow later. Now, Peter was still misunderstanding and declared that he would follow Jesus anywhere and even laid down his life if necessary. And as Jesus patiently continued to teach his disciples, he began to speak more plainly about heaven, describing the place he was going to prepare for them in John chapter 14, verse 2 and 3. Then Jesus said in verse 4, you know the way to the place where I am going. Speaking for the others, it was Thomas who said they did not know where he was going, so how could they know how to follow him there? Jesus then makes this profound statement in verse 6. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Jesus said, you know the way. You know the way. Why why was he saying that? He was saying, because I've been with you. I've been teaching you. I've I've been revealing to you the way, the truth, and the life. And the way and the truth and the life is me, Jesus says. And so, He's affirming this once again by his resurrection. And we, like Jesus, must affirm to people with our words and with our ways that Christ is the resurrection and the life, that Christ is the way, the truth, and the life of resurrection power. And we cannot have eternal life apart from him. No man comes to the Father except through Jesus Christ. So Christ After his resurrection, beyond the resurrection, he appeared to his disciples. He appeared to the disheartened. He appeared to the doubting. And then Jesus, beyond the resurrection, affirmed some things that he had taught while he had been with his disciples. He had affirmed the fact that he was the resurrection and the life. 
He affirmed that he was the way, the truth, and the life. And the third and last thing that Jesus did beyond the resurrection that you and I should be about is that Christ, after his resurrection, ascended. He ascended into heaven. And just like Jesus, we should appear and show up in the lives of others after our own resurrection from the dead, and we should affirm and share the reality of Christ and his available power to all who believe. We should also, like Christ, ascend and live out what I call the ascended life. The ascended life. So Jesus ascended. But what is the ascension all about? And how do we live the ascended life? Well, the first thing that we see is that Jesus ascended to the presence of his Father. Before and after his death and resurrection, Jesus declared to those who were listening that he was sent by his Father and that he must return to his Father. In John 16, 28, just listen to these verses. He says, I came from the Father and have come into the world, and now I am leave, leaving the world and going to the Father. Jesus said to Mary in John 20, verse 17, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and to your God. You see, Jesus fully accomplished his mission, and he glorified the Father while he was here on earth. And at Jesus' ascension, the Father glorifies the Son in heaven. Take heart that Jesus' homecoming to his Father's house prepares the way for our homecoming to be with Jesus forever physically. That's what Jesus really was teaching in John chapter 14. But know that though the ascension of Christ after the resurrection and through that ascension, we are also ascended with him spiritually. You see, it's not just Jesus who ascends, it is we also who ascend into the presence of the Father. Listen to Ephesians 2, 4 through 7. But God, being rich in mercy because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up with him and seated us with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Did you hear those verses? I mean, these are verses you should memorize because it says that we've been raised up or resurrected up or ascended up with him and seated with him in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We have ascended with Christ and remain in his presence. In other words, we are to live from within the presence of God. That is what is meant when I say the ascended life. It is from that place of dwelling we maintain our righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. It is from that place, God's presence, that we stay fresh in our faith and strong in the Lord. It is from that place we can better serve others and show them the way up into God's presence. And all of this is because of the resurrection and the ascension of our Lord. We, too, ascend with Christ beyond the resurrection. You see, Jesus ascended into the presence of his Father, but secondly, he ascended to the position of an intercessor. After the resurrection, Jesus ascended to become unique, the unique mediator between God and man. His death and resurrection secured our forgiveness, our justification, and our reconciliation with God. Now, Jesus is in heaven, interceding for his people as our true high priest and advocate. You see, during his earthly ministry, Jesus' work was geographically limited. He didn't teach in one nation and heal in another nation. His ministry was limited to a geographical region, but now he is at work everywhere. And he is able to hear and respond to his people's prayers no matter the time or place. He sympathizes with our struggles. He promises to do whatever we ask in his name. Likewise, 
we are seated with him in heavenly places. And we have the capacity to intercede and pray for others. We are to pray and seek God's will in every situation. And from our place in Christ, hear me when I say that, our place in Christ, we have an ongoing personal audience with God the Father, the God of all creation. Isn't that amazing to think about? The fact that because Jesus has saved our souls, released us from from bondage, and now we have access into the very throne room of God. That's what it means to live beyond the resurrection. That's what it means to live the ascended life, that we are raised up with Christ to be seated with Him in heavenly places where we now have a personal audience with God the Father, and we can pray not only for ourselves, but we can pray for our families and our friends and our loved ones and and our community and our nation. We can pray for healing. We can pray for deliverance. We can pray for power. We can pray for everyone for everything, because we too have ascended to the position of an intercessor in Christ Jesus. But Jesus not only ascended into the presence of the Father and ascended to the position of an intercessor, He ascended to provide spiritual guidance to His followers. You see, after His resurrection, Jesus told His followers in Luke 24, verse 49, I am sending the promise of My Father upon you. But stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. In the sermon that Peter preached on the day of Pentecost, he explains in Acts chapter 2, verse 33, he says, Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Spirit, Holy Spirit, He has poured out this that you yourselves are seeing and hearing. You see, God promised in Joel chapter 2, verse 28, I will pour my spirit out on all flesh. And this promise is fulfilled by the exalted heavenly Lord Jesus Christ when he arrives at the right hand of the Father. The ascended Lord sent the Spirit to be present with his people, to empower them for worldwide mission, and to transform believers to live new lives reflecting their King, whose name is Jesus. Likewise, we as spirit-filled followers of Christ, spirit-filled believers, are to not only live in accordance with the guidance of the Holy Spirit to minister in the Holy Spirit to others, but we must be bold in praying for people. We must lay hands on folks and bless them and speak the word of the Lord into their lives. And everyone we come into contact with, we are to show Christ by ministering in the power of the Holy Spirit. And in this, we are helping to bring guidance to those in need. You see, the evidence of the resurrected life is that we have, like Christ, appeared before people, showing them a transformed life by the power of God. It is that we affirm the Word of God, the life of Christ, and the power of the Spirit in our resurrected, ascended lifestyle. The ascended life is that we live from within the presence of God, never leaving the safety and security, never leaving the shadow of the Almighty. It is that we intercede. It is that we pray in the Spirit, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord and Chief Advocate. And it is that we live and walk under the guidance of the Holy Spirit and minister in His power and strength to all of those who are in charge or in our charge. So in conclusion, let us understand that living life beyond the resurrection is crucial to not only our well-being, but to the well-being of the entire earth. It is actually living out eternal life. Eternal life is a life that we receive at the point of our new birth. And it is to be lived not in the future, but in the here and now, instead of, of thinking that we have to wait until We live it out when Jesus returns. You see, eternal life is defined as quality of life rather than the length of life. Yes, we have everlasting life in Christ, but the quality of that everlasting forever life is defined by the phrase eternal. And eternal life is a life that has been raised up. It's a life that has been resurrected with Christ. It is a life that has ascended into the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. It is a life that is releasing 
eternal life to all those who would receive it. But understand that you and I are vessels of God, and God wants to use us to spread the life of Christ to all. So life beyond the resurrection is full. It is fruitful. It is a life of faith. Life beyond the resurrection is a life that first and foremost appears. You and I as Christians must appear. We must be present. We must be active. We must be seen. We must be visible. We must be valuable. We must be loud. We must be vocal because that's what appearance really indicates to us. Jesus beyond the resurrection appeared to the disciples, to the disheartened, to the doubting, and so must we. Jesus affirmed who he was. He affirmed what he could do, and so must we affirm that Jesus Christ is life eternal. Jesus Christ is the way and the truth. Jesus Christ is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus Christ is the hope of all mankind. We must affirm these things. And we almost, beyond the resurrection, also must ascend. We must ascend in the very presence of God. We must ascend as prayer warriors and intercessors before the very throne of God on behalf of everyone in our life. We must live beyond the resurrection. And we must ascend to provide spiritual guidance to all those who are in need So may we today faithfully step up to the challenge and live out life productively for the benefit of the human race. May we live our lives to honor and to glorify God. May we bring Him praise with the way in which we live because He is our King. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. And so I pray today that you and I will take to heart the life of Christ beyond the resurrection, and enter into that life ourselves even today, and that you and I may live as well beyond the resurrection. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word, and I thank you for every listener that's out there today. And I pray, Lord, that if there are those who do not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray today will be the day that they give you you, their heart. I pray right now for that person who's lost, who's lonely, who's disheartened and discouraged. I pray that they will see in the resurrection of Jesus Christ hope. I pray that they will see him as life eternal, and I pray that they would be open to receive him today. And with heads bowed and eyes closed, even in your homes where you're watching today, would you just consider your heart and determine whether or not you're saved or lost? Saved means that I have repented of my sin and received Jesus Christ into my life, and He is my Savior and my Lord, and my trust and hope is only in Him. If that's the case and you've had that experience before and, and, and you've placed your faith and trust in Christ, then you're a Christian. But if you've never done that before... I would like to ask you today to trust Him by repenting of your sin. Right where you are, you can say, Father, forgive me for my sin. I, I'm sorry, and I ask you, Lord, to cleanse my heart and create in me a new heart. I accept Jesus Christ into my life as Savior and Lord today. I place my faith and trust in you, Lord. If you'll do that, if you'll pray that prayer right where you are, God will respond to your prayer, and He'll save you and He'll change your life. Father, I thank You for those who are praying and receiving Jesus today as Savior and Lord. I also pray for those who are saved but who have walked away from the Lord that they'll come back. That, Lord, that You'll restore them, that You'll renew them. And I pray that they will take responsibility for their waywardness and repent and call on You and cry out to You right now to cleanse them of all unrighteousness. For you say in your word, Lord, if we confess our sins, you're faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, and you will cleanse us of all unrighteousness. I pray that there are those out here today doing that. And I pray also that, Lord, every one of us will live beyond the resurrection, that we'll accept the resurrection and then live into it a life that is pleasing to you that we will be so passionate about our faith and trust in you that we'll appear to those who are in need, 
that, Lord, we'll affirm your word consistently and constantly in our lives, and that, Lord, we will ascend, Lord, we will ascend into your presence and live from within your presence the life that you have empowered us to live. So I pray for everyone listening right now that you will do something dramatic and supernatural and powerful in their life. And I trust you, Lord, to do that in Jesus' name. Amen. If you've received Christ today, we want to encourage you to please contact us and let us know. You can contact us by calling 760-949-8979 and leave a message and we will get back with you. Or you can go onto our website and you can fill out an information uh, portion of our site there at the bottom of the home page. You can just fill that information out and send it to us in the form of an email. And we'll be glad to respond to you because we certainly would like to help you in your new walk with Christ. If you're not a part of the Gate Church of the High Desert, we want to invite you to come and be a part of us whenever we return to gatherings, hopefully in May. We'd love for you to come visit us, and uh, we'd love to walk with you in your Christian life as well. God bless you. We love you. Thank you so much for tuning in today, and call on us if you need us.